Did you know that doctors used to inject asbestos into, well, into all kinds of places, actually? And none of them were very pleasant. On this episode of Asbestos Artifacts. Welcome to Asbestos Artifacts, where we take a look at some old asbestos products and dig a little bit into the story behind them. I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane. Today's artifact is a glass syringe full of asbestos packing. Now let's unpack exactly what this is and why a syringe full of asbestos was once considered to be a medical device. Now syringes have been around a lot longer than hypodermic needles. Ancient Romans and Greeks had a kind of syringe for anointing with oil, and during the Middle Ages, people in Egypt and France were using them surgically. So by 1814, when a farmer from Lincolnshire decided to get into the medical supply business, syringes were almost as standard as an instrument for a surgeon as a scalpel. The farmer, George Maw, M-A-W, bought a surgical plaster factory in London, and then eventually stepped down for his son Solomon to take over. Solomon expanded the business to make a wide variety of surgical and other medical devices, and the business was family-run up until they were acquired in the 1970s. In addition to today's artifact, this glass syringe with an asbestos-packed plunger, Ma made a wide variety of products. Let's take a look at some of the oddities they made. Okay, we, we got those, and, uh, and that thing, these guys, and those things. Trefining, that's where they help you feel better by punching holes in your skull. Just think, that was once the height of modern medicine. Anyway, so the Ma Medical Goods Company also sold these syringes. As you can see, in addition to STDs, they also helped with bladder infections and other urinary conditions. A syringe is composed of the barrel, which can be made of metal or glass like this artifact, or plastic like most syringes today. Now the second part is the plunger, which is also called a piston, and that's where the asbestos comes in. The piston applies steady pressure on the medicine to focus it into its target. In this case, the piston was made of tightly wound asbestos fabric, as were many syringes in the first half of the 20th century. Asbestos was used in the syringe to help filter out particles and contaminants from the medicine being plunged through the syringe. Asbestos fibers have a unique structure that contributes to their effectiveness in trapping and filtering out tiny particles. The fibers are thin and elongated with a high aspect ratio, which means they have a long length compared to their diameter. This structure allows asbestos to form a dense and intricate network when woven or compacted that creates a barrier that effectively captures small particles as they pass through. The interwoven fibers create a matrix with numerous microscopic spaces that can trap dust, pollutants, and other fine particles, making asbestos a practical material for filtration applications. Filtration was a major use of asbestos in the 20th century, and not just in syringes or medical devices. Most wine and beer manufacturers once filtered their products through asbestos, and sometimes asbestos was even used by pharmaceuticals to filter medicines. The fine asbestos fibers were able to trap small contaminants that could cause infections. That would have been of particular importance in this case because this is a urethral syringe. A urethral syringe is used to administer medicine for sexually transmitted diseases. In fact, one of the artifacts found on the ship of the pirate Blackbeard himself was a metal urethral syringe, because one of the most common uses of urethral syringes was for dealing with that all too common pirate problem of syphilis. And if that isn't metal enough for you, the syringes were used to inject a specific type of metal, mercury, into the place where the syphilis would be found. The only problem is, well, maybe not the only problem, but definitely a big problem, is that asbestos fibers cause cancer and a variety of other respiratory and digestive problems depending on the exposure. And asbestos fibers are easily released, especially in this fibrous form. So using a syringe like this risks having asbestos fibers injected directly into your body. That's especially dangerous because the fibers can and do migrate from wherever they're injected into other portions of the body. These fibers then embed themselves in your tissue, and over time, scar tissue forms. Sometimes the scar tissue causes cancer to develop. Scientists aren't yet sure why that happens, but I don't think there's any scientist out there who would recommend the usage of this artifact under any circumstances. As for today's artifact, it too was for STDs, but by the time this syringe was made, they didn't use mercury to cure syphilis anymore. In the early 1900s, a German biochemist named Paul Ehrlich found that a type of arsenic could cure syphilis. That was the standard practice until the 1940s when penicillin became a standard treatment for syphilis. I bet Blackbeard would have traded all of his treasure for a syringe full of penicillin, hopefully not also full of asbestos. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane. Thanks for watching Asbestos Artifacts. Mm -hmm.